Hello there, everybody. This is General Snivy, and welcome back to more Let's Play The Last Remnant. Today, we're going to be taking on what I believe to be one of the longest side quests in the game. But it's certainly not the most annoying. No, 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 no. That doesn't come until later. By later, I mean just a little while later. Trust me. For any of you veterans out there of this game, you know exactly what side quest I'm referring to. Now for this side quest at hand, we're returning to the Great Sand Sea. And what's different about this trip as opposed to others is now, since we began the second half of this game, it's now infested with these freaking birds of death known as the Spirit Lords. They are everywhere and all over the Great Sand Sea. So approach with caution. Even if you have a high morale, their curse ability is going to severely knock down your morale down to almost nothing. So, yeah, I just want to put that out there. For battle strategies, there's the usual pound them to the ground until you win. And, yeah, you will have to change it up just slightly. I would recommend having like one or two unions on standby and while have and I would suggest having the rest attack the birds so that way those guys who are attacking on the offense for black the guys who are on the offensive are the ones who get cursed while the other ones who are not cursed can come in kill them revive them and get on with the fight because really curse is only used once, like at the very beginning of battle when you first engage the Spirit Lord. And it also takes quite a bit of time to take down too, because the Spirit Lord is very stubborn as far as HP is concerned. It has a ton of HP and it's not going to go down without a fight. And it pretty much behaves in the same uh, sort of field as any of the other variants of these freaking birds that we've faced thus far. Annoying as hell, and they just love to curse you to death. Yeah. That's pretty much it, they just curse you dead. Annoying, sure, but what can you do? So, what can I talk about today? Well, truth be told, I really don't know. I didn't really come in here with a list of topics at all. The only thing I did was just uh, say, hey, I want to pop in and make a video or two. And that's what I'm doing here now. Now, you may also be wondering, why didn't I just cut to the destination? Well, that's because I wanted to show off the fight against the Spirit Lord, for one. And... Two, it's a really, really long trip. Okay, it's not that long. What am I saying? I don't know. In other news, my chair is starting to bend on me and fall apart. <laughs> not. Well, not really. It's bending, yes, but I am able to bend it back. Back to its original position. Right now, anyway. Let's just see how long I can keep this up. Hopefully I won't have to resort to just sitting on my bed and using my dinner table to place my keyboard and mouse on and having to zoom into the freaking computer screen at two, like 150%. <sighs> that is such a pain in the ass, let me tell ya. It sucks not having a chair. It really does. And I have to wait until after the holidays in order to get one. Because we don't have the money to do it. We don't have the money to get one. Which sucks. But hey, what can you do? Just gotta make do with what you got and make the best of it. And try not to complain too much. So, what else can I talk about today? Well, truth be told, I really don't have much anything else to talk about. I've seen the recent Family Guy Christmas special episode or whatever it is. I think it's called uh, Christmas Guy or something like that. 
In that episode, Brian Griffin was brought back to life, which was freaking awesome. How did it happen? Well, I'm not going to say, because I don't want to spoil the episode. You'll just have to watch it and find out for yourself. You should still be able to find it on YouTube from last time I checked, but then again, Fox probably took it down in a matter of days. Who knows? Again, just have to wait and see. I mean, there are other ways of watching Family Guy episodes. There are even other websites where you can find them and watch them. I haven't gone searching for any of them because I didn't feel like it. Well, there's also Netflix, too. Or Hulu. Hulu Plus. You can watch it on Hulu Plus as well. Another idea you can do. What am I saying? I don't know. I don't care about it more. So let's see, I need to think for a few moments of what else I can talk about. To tell the truth, there really hasn't been much of anything happening as of late, it's just kind of the same old thing. Again and again, I haven't really found any interesting topics. And, uh, I haven't come across any news online that are really related. Or anything like that. Which stinks. Well, there is one thing I could talk about. Is that recently Steam re-released... Well, more or less it was Square. Square Enix. They re-released Final Fantasy VIII for Steam. A lot of people say that it isn't a very good port of the original Final Fantasy VIII. In fact, it's inferior. Well, this is due to the couple of things that Square did which was really stupid. One, they changed the music to uh, like a certain format or something and degraded quality greatly from the PlayStation counterpart. And a lot of people also say that the FMVs are ruined too due to like a blur or something yeah. that Square I'm added to the everything. FMVs just to make them look high res or something. Well, I disagree with the FMVs. FMVs actually look fine to me. And I play on a full 1080p monitor on the HDMI, so... Yeah. I don't notice anything wrong here. Now we're gonna cut towards the entrance of where we gotta go within the Great Sand Sea. It's actually quite a bit of ways. Head towards the left-hand side and just stay within this area. Yeah, paint that image within your mind. It's around this area where you have to go. Once you get past the Spirit Lord and take a few steps forward, it'll automatically send you to your next destination in order to continue this side quest. And it's quite a bit of a ways too. One other thing I need to mention about this side quest, much like the one back in Dilmore, this side quest is going to be split into three videos. I was thinking it was going to be longer. I was thinking it was going to be around five or six videos, but... No, oddly enough, it didn't take me as long as I thought it was going to be. And this is due to the fact that I only took one pass as opposed to the other two. As you can see, there are three paths in which you can take to ascend through this tower. One on the left, right, and down the middle. The shortest path? I'm not sure. I think all paths are equal in length, but some are more dangerous than others, so keep this in mind. After I finished the side quest, I came back to this tower to pick up all the treasures that I missed on the other two paths, and I also did some training off screen. And I also set up some new unions and really odd thing of. It's an odd band of misfits. You'll have to wait and see in a future video after the side quest is done. Done. Come on, let's kick some eggs. Now for the first set of enemies we have here. The Basilics? Yeah, I think they're called Basilic. 
Basilic, what can I say about them? We've seen these a variant of these guys before, but they're more annoying than ever here. Because they do have a bit of a tendency to spam mine smash mine. They have a tendency to spam mine crush. Kind of like in Yu-Gi-Oh! How the you know the Pharaoh would uh, free some people like in the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Remember when Yuki freed Kaiba's mind when he was committing bad deeds? As many of you know within the English dub, he said open your mind, but when uh, four kids came back and redubbed that episode, he actually said mind crush, which was freaking awesome. I wish they continued that, but unfortunately, no, you can't always get what you want, especially when it comes to that company. Thankfully, they're not existent, but I don't know. I'll take you down with my own hand. I did hear that the Yu-Gi-Oh! was recently released on DVD, which is odd. Like, why wait till around 2012, 2013 to do it? And the unfortunate thing is, it doesn't include the original Japanese dub, which is stupid, in my opinion. It really is. Really wish they would include the, you know, the Japanese dubs as a different way of watching the show. You know, give us a little bit of variety here. That would be really nice. But, no. You can't always get what you want. Especially when it comes to certain programming. In Google. But that's another tale for another time. Another thing with Ball Slicks, what can I say about them? They do have a bit of a tendency to show up in groups. Just be careful and watch your head and everything should be okay. I pretty much see that all the time, but what can you do? Now, let's see, what else can I pull out my butt to turn into a discussion? Well, around this time of the year, when the video gets released, which is going to be in January, around January is the time of the Polar Bear Flying at least that's how it was in Maryland. But here, I don't think there is one. But then again, who knows? Who knows for sure? I haven't really looked into it. If there's a polar bear plunge within your state or your area, have you ever participated in it? And feel free to share your experiences in the comments, comments section below. Even if you didn't participate and you just donated some money towards it, let me know if you did that or not. I'd love to know. I participated in the polar bear plunge before. I think I've done it at least three times. Once I did it with my stepfather, and two times I did it with my sister and some of her friends. And each time was a really fun experience. The water was cold, but damn it was fun. It's really fun to be able to rush into the water and just plunge in there and be a freaking beast. Numb to the freaking bottom of your body all the way up. I'm serious about that, though. I've heard from my sister that I was the only one who actually had the balls to go so far out into the cold water and actually high-five one of the divers out there who were monitoring the people who were doing the plunge to make sure they don't go through hyperthermia or whatever. I actually went that far in. I think I even went underwater at one point. Or during one of the plunges. I'm not sure, but it was cold. Very cold. And it was like three seconds, bam, my body went numb. But it was worth it because it was it was just a really awesome adrenaline rush. And despite this I just kept pushing myself to go, 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 go! Oh, man, what a rush. What an experience. 
Have you ever done something like that? I'd love to hear it. Oh, those were the good times. Let's do this. Let's see, what else should I discuss today? Nothing really much is happening as far as the, my personal life is concerned. I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but recently I did purchase myself a little converter box or whatever it is to be able to record the PlayStation 3 through HDMI. Because as some of you should know, recording gameplay from the HDMI on the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 is practically, no, it is impossible due to the here. fact that Sony integrated HDCP, which is high definition copyright protection. That's it. High definition copyright protection. They implemented this to prevent users from, you know, capturing Blu-rays and movies and stuff like that and uploading them to the internet. Which is a good idea to have that implemented, but I wish it wasn't implemented in games. You know, it's, Microsoft also does have HDCP, but only for movies and TV shows, and not for games. I don't know why Sony couldn't do the same thing. There is a rumor going around that Sony is going to release a patch for the PlayStation 4 to, uh, to disable the HDCP for games and keep it en enabled for movies and stuff. But I don't know if that's going to be happening or not because it didn't happen for the PlayStation 3 as far as I know. So, for the time being, we have to use this little monoprice converter box thing along with the HDMI to DV cable and an optical cable in order to capture video and audio from the PlayStation 3 via HDMI as well as the PlayStation 4. Do I have a next gen console yet? No, no I do not. I'm probably not going to get a next generation console anytime soon. Well, I have the Wii U, so I'm kind of eating my own words. Whoops. So yeah, don't have a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One yet. Don't know when I'm getting one. I may get one, like, towards the middle of 2014, but who knows. I gotta get a job first, and it's gonna take quite a bit of time for me to get another job. Let's do this! Still searching, but it looks like there's going to be a ray of hope for me, thankfully. I'm actually going to be getting involved with, like, uh, this little career center thing, or whatever it is, I'm not sure. But it sounds promising, okay, I'll later. tell them what kind of job I'm looking for, what am I interested in, and hopefully they'll be able to find something that... I'm interested in, personally. Let's do this. Now let's talk about stuff. Throughout the tower we're mostly going to be fighting those weird lizards and freaking jellyfish as we're ascending the tower. There's going to be some other enemies that we're going to fight as well, but they're probably not going to be featured in this video. I'm not 100% certain on that yet. Another thing I need to mention, throughout the tower we're going to find little stone tablets that dictate the, how the tower came to be and to tell the truth, this place used to be a kingdom. It used to be like a center point for a certain kingdom. And during the time of the God Emperor and whatnot. The lore is actually pretty interesting if you really read into it and read through the entire thing in order. But the tablets are placed throughout several different places throughout the tower. It's not even funny. And a lot of them are placed out of order too. Which also stinks. Which means you pretty much have to go through all three of the paths in order to, you know, learn all the history of the kingdom that was this place. I hear Underwalt was also part of this kingdom too. Let's do this. 
could have sworn there was another place that was a part of this kingdom, but I can't remember for sure. Haven't read too much into it because I'm not all that interested in the lore of this kingdom. But hey, that's just me. I'm just here to clean up what's left in these ruins and uh... I'm here to just get things done. Because I'm that kind of person, I guess. It's fun. Deal with it. Also, we're going to be finding those beetles there too, but really they're nothing special. They're pretty much the same thing as we fought before in the Great Sand Sea. And I'm out of time. This is General Snivy with Let's Play The Last Remnant. Thank you guys so much for watching. Next time, more of this insane tower.